Hey now, so I'm having a nice day and I noticed that the Memphis Vinyl Gym and the Mrs. Hey y'all, you got your uh, May thing going already and I like these questions so um, I decided to uh, go ahead and uh, answer them since uh, as you know I like to say I vibed with them. <laughs> so uh, let me answer right away. Let me get started. Number one. With May, Housing, Mother's Day, Teacher's Day, and, Mo and Memorial Day, show us which album reminds you of one of these impactful persons in your life, or which album was a mother, teacher, or protector in your life. Well, uh, just, it just, I don't know, it just caught me funny, so I said, I gotta show this. James Brown, it's a mother. <laughs> Oh, just don't mind me. I love this album. And Mother Popcorn and Mashed Potato Popcorn, Little Groove Maker Me, Popcorn with a Feeling, Top of the Stack. This whole album is just awesome. It's a mother. <laughs> so, um, when we, when we think of, um, when I think of mothers, you know, there's the humorous side and in a real, real sense, I think of It's a Mother by James Brown because of the impact this music had has had on, on me as a person. <laughs> but I'm going to defer right to my mom. And my mom was a singer, but, um, you know, she lost her hearing when I was just a, a, a kid, very young. And so she, um, you know, had to stop singing and stuff. But... Um, she would really love gospel music and so gospel music i don't have it in my collection because it just you know you know, i just really don't enjoy listening to it you know a whole number of reasons but uh mahalia jackson would be one gospel singer that definitely reminds me of my mom what i have in my collection that would come closest to something that honestly reminds me of my mom and her singing because she would sing when we were little kids even though she couldn't hear herself, you could, the quality of her voice was amazing, you know. And uh, she could she could hear herself, and so she would be pretty much in key. But just Ella Fitzgerald um, reminds me of my mom a little bit. Not that my mom sang like Ella at all, but just that. Um, this is what I have in my collection that would uh, represent my mom for, for me. And um, she's an ever-present uh, presence in my life. Interestingly, she's been gone since like 85 or 86, you know, and my dad even before that. But um, you other folks who have maybe lost your parents already, I would... I would imagine it's the same for you. They're, a, they're kind of a living presence always, aren't they? Yeah. So, neat question. Um, you know, when I think of teachers, you know, it's interesting how some of the teachers that you thought you hated the most come to mind right away, like Miss Hatcher. I thought she was such a bitch, and she was so helpful to me <laughs> in the seventh grade, rest her soul. Okay, number two. With May being International month, month, show us an album from your collection that is an international album or your favorite piece of world music. I'm listening to one of my favorites right now, and it is this collection of music from Burma. Burmani Music Dart. And uh, this is fascinating because, again, in reading about Burma and its culture, um, at one time, it appears that it was like one of the powers in the southeast centuries ago and um uh, this music you know it's fascinating uh it's history of how it's passed on and a lot of um these the like the gamelan and these instruments just very interesting but also what's interesting is a lot of the tradition of this music is vocal that a lot of the melodies are passed on, you know, generation to generation vocally. But this is definitely uh, 
got to be one of my favorites. Um, it's a three record set on this really excellent label, which I would love to find more of, Pokora. Just, just, you know, super high quality. So that is my answer to question number two. A really good questions, Jim and the Mrs. Hay. Um, question number three. Well, this being our 300 plus subs contest and uh, congratulations, by the way, 300 plus. Get down with your bad selves. Yeah, lots of love for you in the community. The third of three questions show us three pieces from your collection that make no sense when shown together. Oh, and tell us why you own them. Mm, I don't know that these will really, I probably didn't read the question that close. These all these answer the second part of the question the best, and they don't really make sense when I show them together. Um, it's just the truth of the matter of why I have these records. So the first one is Daddy Cool, and this is um, thanks to Jeff, Jeff Record Man 1958. He gave this to me, um, found himself a decent copy of this. You know, the reason why this record actually doesn't make too much sense in my collection is because I really don't like this band. I don't like what they're doing. It's that rock and roll thing. They're good at it, but I just, I do not like listening to this music. Why do I have it? Because it's a cool cover. And it was one of those covers that, honestly, when I was a kid, a teen, that I would see in the record racks, and I would fantasize about, what does it sound like? Because I thought it was such a cool name um, and cover. I never got a chance to hear it until, I mean, decades later, just recently, you know. And don't like the music. I have both of the records now. Thank you, Jeff. You know, I'm not ungrateful. I'm just saying, you know, I gotta just be straight. That's why it doesn't make any sense that I have it. I would, you know, because I don't like it, but I wanted it. And so I have it. The next one is Ricky Lee Jones, Girl at Her Volcano. Once again, this is on 10 inch. And just the style of music, just really, uh, I just have no interest. And so why do I have it? Because it's a 10 inch and I got it for like I think I got this for a, for like a quarter, and it's in good shape. So uh, it's part of the 10-inch collection for now. Uh, yeah, so that's why it, this really doesn't make sense in my collection, because it does not represent an actual interest of mine musically. And the third one is the same, Savage Grace too. This one is in my collection, and it's only here because I think the that's a very strange and interesting cover. I think this album is wretched. I've listened to it over and over again, and for my taste, I can't find anything on it that I like. And that's not a diss to these cats. It's I'm just telling you straight about my taste. Okay, see, that's how I can, um, not justify, but that's how I can handle being very blunt and speaking things and that's what i want back which is okay well what is it you know and i'm not dissing this band i'm not saying that they're a bad band i'm saying this is wretched for my taste i can't find something on this album that i like to listen to so that's why this record doesn't make really any sense in my collection except that it's obscure and that the cover is i like the cover Savage Grace 2. As, as, as lousy as I think the record is, and I've played it in the last year to reaffirm whether or not there's anything good on it, I still, at this point, would get rid of a bunch more different records before I would get rid of this one because I do like um, art, cover record art, and this is one that I like. You know, it just looks like it should be something a lot more musically ambitious than it is to me. So once again, congratulations, Memphis Vinyl Jim and the Misses, y'all, <laughs> down there in Memphis. 
birthplace of the blues, you know. I have such res respect for all that. And I know about its importance to the whole of art, Western art, world art. I respect it and understand it, know it, and have lived it. Actually, still live it, hear it every day. <laughs> so, um... Congratulations, and um, I hope that you enjoyed these uh, answers. Um, I, you know, I haven't followed through. I got a stack of records for you. I'm just going to ha have to look at a secure way and just come on up with it and send those babies to you. But I do. I need to find a nice way to box because it's more than a few um, singles. Bless you all. <laughs>